Welcome. So what I'm going to do is show you how to factor this um, by kind of using some factoring techniques in our head. Not going to use uh, some longer methods. We're going to try to make this as quick as possible. Um, so we're going to try factoring. Actually, we're going to try solving by factoring. But we notice our a is greater than 1. Now, the first thing we always want to do is see if we can factor out the GCF. And it looks like an even number we could factor out until we get to our middle term. We notice that's odd. So therefore, we do not have any common terms we can factor out. So when looking at a problem like this, the first thing I like to do is break apart our A and our C into its factors. So we can see what types of problems we can work on. So 20, I have 20 times 1, 10 times 2, or 5 times 4. And for 6, I have 6 times 1, or 3 times 2. So now that I know my factors, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of break this apart into two different problems. Now remember, we're trying to solve. So we're going to have our output value equal to 0. And now what I'm going to do is take a look at this and see how am I going to factor this into my two different sets, where a could either be 6 and 1 or 3 and 2. So I'm going to break this up into two different types of problems. So we'll have 0 equals 6x times x. Or we could say 0 equals 3x times 2x. All right, so those are my two different possibilities for my a, because both of these, when I multiply my first two terms, gives me 6x squared. Both of these, when I multiply my terms, give me 6x squared. Now, we notice my last term is positive, but my middle term is negative. Therefore, we're gonna, I'm going to work on my, um, my 20, or my factors of 20, are both going to have to be negative. Now, you could rewrite that with your a's being negative and then your 20's being positive. But I like to always keep the a's, um, or my my uh, first terms to always be positive. All right, so now we just need to kind of do a little guessing and checking and kind of see what we need to do. So we need to add up our middle terms and our, I'm sorry, our middle and our outer terms to add up to negative 23. So we're gonna, just going to do a little guess and check. And we can kind of eliminate some things. I'm not going to want to put a 20 here because 6x times negative 20 is a negative 120x. That's not going to give me anywhere near negative 23. So we already know that one's wrong. But maybe let's try this. 6x times negative 1 is negative 6. x times negative 20 is negative 26. A little close, but a little off. So that's not going to work. Then we can maybe do 10 and 2. Again, I'm not going to put the 10 here, because 10 times 6 is 60. I know that's not going to give me anywhere close. So let's do negative 10 here and negative 2. 6 times um, negative 2 is a negative 12x. And then times negative 10 times x is a negative 10x, which is negative 22, which is so close, just not there. So let's go back to the drawing board. And it doesn't look like 5 and 4 are going to work at all, because that's just going to give me, um, either way, I'm going to have numbers that are just going to be too large. Even if I put a 4 here, that's going to give me already negative 24. And then I'm going to have to minus a 5. So it just doesn't look like 6 and 1 are going to work for this problem. But now I have 3x and 2x. Um, again, I think I can pretty much eliminate the 20. That's just no matter where I put the 20, I'm going to either multiply by 2 or by 3. And it's just going to make that problem too large. So let's go and look at the 10 and the 2. Um, again, if I put a 10 in here, I'm going to do 10 times 3, which is a negative 30. And 2 times 2, that's just going to be too close. Um, we can go ahead and look at putting the 10 here would be 20. And then 2, that'd be 26. Not going to be it. Um, but let's go ahead. Now let's go and work with the 5 and the 4. Well, what about if I put a negative 5 here and a negative 4 there? So we already know that 3x times 2x gives me 6x squared. Negative 4 times negative 5 gives me a negative 20. Now let's check the middle terms. 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. I'm sorry, negative 4 times 2x is a negative 8x. And 3x times negative 5 is a negative 15x. Well, negative 15x minus 8x is going to be negative 23x. So there we go. We found our solution. Now we can apply the zero product property. So I set both of these equal to 0. So 0 equals 3x minus 4. And 2x minus 5 equals 0. Now I use my inverse operations to solve.
So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find your solutions by solving by factoring. Thanks.